Poem for My Sister by Liz Lockhead. This is a really nice poem which um, deals with the speaker's worries about her sister as she gets older. She certainly doesn't want, she doesn't want her to grow old too quickly. There's perhaps a tone of um, remorse that the speaker herself grew up too quickly and she doesn't want to see it for her sister. There's a real feeling of love, a real feeling of care, uh, tones of, of care as well, and um, just wanting our sister to be the best that she can, and as I said, not to grow up too quickly. We'll get into the poem. There's um, no regular rhyme scheme, no regular rhythm to it whatsoever. So it's written more, oops, sorry. So it's written, we can therefore say, in free verse, okay? There's no discernible rhyme scheme, there's no discernible um, rhythm to it. Let's get in about it. My little sister likes to try my shoes, to strut in them, admire her spindle thin 12 year old legs in this season's styles. If you walk in somebody's shoes, we always say, if you're walking in somebody's shoes, you're trying to emulate them, you're trying to follow them, you're trying to be just like them. And this is what this little sister is to the speaker. She likes to try on her shoes and to what to strut in them. Strut shows real confidence. If you're strutting about in something, it shows that you're really confident in it and that, um, yeah, she's, she's comfortable, she's comfortable and she's confident in her big sister's shoes. She likes to admire her spindle thin, very, very thin 12 year old legs in this season's styles. And this idea here, she likes to look at herself in the mirror, in her big sister's shoes, and she likes to feel like a lot like a grown up, basically. We've got the word choice here of season as well, and it's very much plays in with this idea of time passing. Every season in the fashion world is a new collection. Every season in an adolescent world, every every four months, let's say, there's adolescence, there's changing. People start to grow up and develop, and that's where that word choice uh, comes in here. She says that they fit her perfectly, but wobbles on their high heels. They're hard to balance. And this idea here is that she says the shoes physically do feel her, uh, fit her perfectly, but she tells us that they wobble. She's not very confident. She's not very, that word here, she's not very confident. She's not experienced in it. She's still wobbling. She's still growing up. She's at the very early stages of becoming a teenager. And this idea, she's going to have wobbles. She's going to have shaky moments as she becomes a teenager. And that is essentially just part of life. She says, they're hard to balance. And perhaps that's a metaphor for the speaker. It's hard to balance her affections and love for her little sister and wanting to care and protect and look after her. And she's trying to balance that with the understanding and the idea that actually this is my sister that's growing up here. This is my, my sister and I've got to allow her to grow up. But at the same time, she doesn't want to. Obviously, really smacks of football after school by Patricia McCarthy as well, with this idea of protection, protectiveness, not wanting to see the the child um, go off and grow up and be become an adult. Again, as well, obviously, registers it tie it in with as well. And to a lesser extent, the gift by Chrissy Banks as well. Okay, let's see the next stanza. We're then told that I, so the speaker making a very personal pronoun, I, I like to watch my little sister playing hopscotch, a very childlike game. That's when you've got all the squares, for those of you who don't know, I think it's something like that, I never played it myself. And you've got maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it's usually girls in playgrounds that play it, and they've got to, I don't even know how it works, but they've got to basically jump through, jump onto the squares and things like that. She tells us, that she likes to watch her little sister playing hopscotch to admire the neat hops and skips of her, their quick peck, never missing the mark, not overstepping the line. She's competent at Peaver. And Peaver is just a Scottish dialect. If we think about the other Lockhead poem in the collection, we also see this uh, being laundrette. We see her use of the Scottish dialect, Scottish colloquialisms, really trying to make her overtly Scottish. She's a Scottish writer and she's really, she always tries to, or mostly tries to set her poems in Scotland. And it's word choice like Peaver, which is the Scottish version of Hopscotch, if you like. It's a game that's played usually by girls. Um, takes us into that environment. She, she admires the neat hops and, uh, hops and skips of her, their quick peck, never missing the mark. She's always 
bang on. She always gets exactly in the square that she's meant to. She's not overstepping the line. And again, that's an idiom. If you overstep the line, you take it too far. So she's admon she's admitting here that, yeah, you know, my sister is growing up. She wants to be older, but she's not overstepping the line. She's not going too far ahead. And there's an, there's an indication that the speaker's happy enough with that as it is. She's still playing her little, little girl's games. Even though she wants to be like her big sister, she's still playing her little girl games, and she's quite happy with that. And the word choice of competent, she's not excellent, she's not amazing, but she's competent, she's normal at it. And again, it's that idea of normality. The speaker really wants her little sister to have a normal adolescence, a normal childhood, and that's really what she's trying to echo here. We get into this final third stanza there, and the speaker tells us, I try. She tries to warn my little sister about unsuitable shoes, point out my own distorted feet, the calluses. She's a really mother figure here. It's Again, it's got that role reversal. If we think about the gift by Chrissy Banks, the mother and son role reversal, this is a big sister, uh, mother, if you like, role reversal. And the big sister becomes the mother-like figure. I will try to warn, and that word choice of try suggests that the little sister doesn't really always listen. But she tries to warn my little sister about unsuitable shoes. Unsuitable shoes is something your mother or your grandmother might say. Oh, those are unsuitable shoes that you're wearing. And she tries to point out my own distorted feet, the calluses, the the marks left, the the almost the wounds created on her feet by wearing unsuitable shoes herself. She's really trying to get her little sister to lead by her uh, perhaps not lead by our example she's trying to give the idea that you know I don't want you to be too experienced too quickly I don't want you wearing the high heel shoes I don't want you to grow up too quickly point out my own distorted feet really suggests that she wants her little sister to learn from her mistakes and to make sure that she doesn't make them as well uh, odd patches of hard skin and she tells us I should not like to see her in my shoes and that's a very definitive statement we've obviously got the uh, full stop there, got the full stop there, we've got a full sentence here. I should not like to see her in my shoes. She would not like to see her going through what she experienced when she was younger growing up. And she says, I wish she could stay sure-footed, sensibly shod. And obviously we've got sibilance being used throughout there as well. We can see, I wish she could stay sure-footed, sensibly shod. And that's very much um, an intentional use of sibilance. And perhaps it's almost trying to echo that idea. Young people sometimes have lisps, don't they? It's, uh, they speak a bit like that sometimes. And perhaps that's what she's trying to echo here. I wish you could stay sure-footed, sensibly shod. It's maybe just that idea, that childlike voice that she really hopes that her sister's able to maintain. She really doesn't want her sister to grow into an adult. She doesn't want her sister to experience the same feelings, the same problems that she's experienced growing up. And she's really just looking out for her. The tone is really that of protection. It's a very protective poem. She's been very much protective of her sister and her future. Again, the lack of regular rhythm, the lack of a regular rhyme scheme suggests that life, obviously, growing up is not perfect. We know that. It's absolutely not perfect. But at the same time, she is um, wanting to make sure that her sister has as good an adolescence as possible. But with the lack of rhyme scheme and regular rhythm, it does suggest to us life not perfect and there's no guaranteed rhythm. There's no guaranteed pattern that every adolescent takes. Adolescents will go off and try their own ideas, their own things, experiment, doing different things that perhaps they shouldn't, as you all do as young people as well, I'm sure. And that is really what the writer is trying to get across. That's really why the writer's not used a lot of um, rhyme scheme, a regular rhyme scheme or rhythm. She uses quite a bit of enjambment throughout the poem, as you'll see there. Obviously, we've got enjambment there, we've got enjambment there. And it's perhaps, again, just that idea of, you know, her thoughts. It's that stream of conscious idea. She's really trying to just get her, her thoughts across. It's almost like an internal monologue within herself. Her worries, her observing her sister and her worries about it. As always, go through it very carefully, pick up individual word choices, Think, look, go into the dictionary, <coughs> look at their different meanings, think about denotation of what it literally means, connotation, what is being suggested, and what the writer might be trying to say by, um, by doing it this way, by using those word choices, uh, what she's trying to emphasise by using them as well.